Welcome to this episode of Pen to Paper Press Podcast. I'm Cindy Coaches. I enjoy spending time with best-selling authors, writers, editors, publishers, and creative souls to talk about the process of developing our stories to completing our works of art. Each episode is an opportunity for us to explore mindsets, pearls of wisdom, and the experiences that began our journey as a writer from the moment we put pen to paper. I am grateful for another opportunity to speak to Dana Colvin. As you heard in episode 32, we attempted to record an interview, however had significant phone issues that left her unable to hear me. She is back with me in the Pen to Paper Press virtual virtual podcast studio, and we have our fingers crossed that everything will work out. Dana is a holistic, green living, wellness warrior mama, a coach, and recently published her first children's storybook, Amy and Her Fairy Friends. Dana, I am so glad that we are able to connect again. How are you doing? <laughs> me too. I was laughing right around with you when you said keeping your fingers crossed. That cracked me up. I'm, I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> That's wonderful. And thank you, for, thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. Well, you know, it was... I, you know, I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? You know, I only had like, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of podcast interview uh, that wasn't us going, hello, hello, you know, can you hear me? (laughs) And so I... It was was absurd and ridiculous, my goodness. I mean, the tech guys were like nuts. Helping us out. They were. And so I'm like, well, what do I do with this? And I'm like, you know, my intuition just kept saying, you got to, you got to share what she said. Um, yeah. You know, those last 10 minutes or, well, I think it was less than 10 minutes, but that last part where you talked was so from your heart. And I mean, it just like, this is why we write. This is why you write. This is mm-hmm. why anybody who is questioning, why am I doing this? It was like you 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 breathed a little bit of life into all of this, and it was like it was so important that I share what you had said. So I, you know, yes. <laughs> I'm glad, and I um, and I do uh, feel the same way, and I I enjoy sharing my story and my journey and and I love talking about this so it's great and I'm I'm really glad that we can talk about it (laughs) me too and just just as a refresher this is your first children's book you have written several other books and they were mainly on health and wellness poetry and uh and they were not mainly non-fiction books correct well, actually, yes and no. Uh, okay. actually, no. <laughs> I just got to to myself. Um, my first children's book, uh, yeah, sorry, tongue tied. My first children's book, yes. However, I have, well, not an even number of fiction and nonfiction, but I have two romantic environmental adventure novels, one uh, poetry book, and two holistic self care books. Actually, one's a cookbook, and the other one's organic beauty. So, it's kind of um, balanced out between the two. I have fiction and nonfiction. And ironically, well, maybe not ironically, because I'm the right life of a writer, <laughs> um, I'm working on my second children's book. Um, and my um, I have another holistic self-care book coming up as well. You do? So yep. <laughs> the holistic... I forgot to mention that to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're always so full of surprises. So this next holistic book, what is it focused on? Well, I'm not. A, I can't really share much because I'm putting the finishing touches. It's kind of a sequel, but okay. I'm putting together an e course, and it's basically a compilation of everything that I've learned in 30 years of wellness and herbalism and and just meditation and such and so it's it's kind of a refresher of everything with some new ideas thrown in and also some tips and some poems as well and recipes so it's oh. a really cool compilation yeah it sounds wonderful it sounds like it's definitely going to help those 
that are seeking to better their their life situation and and find those healthier options it'll help answer some of those questions how wonderful absolutely i mean i green living has been my life for 30 years and it's in my blood it's in my soul i mean you should see my instagram <laughs> it's like <laughs> lately i've been sharing a lot of my of excerpts from my fiction and my poetry but practically every day or several times a week I'm sharing tips and recipes and ideas about wellness and it's all over my Facebook I mean it, I'm it's it's what I talk about all the time green living is my passion it has been for a long time and it's just it's I'm a nature lover in every way so that's wonderful and so um Going back to uh, Amy and her fairy friends, I'm sorry not to be bouncing us around uh, the different topics, but with that book, um, I noticed, uh, and I and I made the comment on episode 32, that for every 10 books that are sold, you're donating a, a I believe it was a dollar. I just lost the dollar amount. But anyways, you're making that donation. So that shows to me that your generosity in wanting to not only live the green life, but to help promote it and to get back to those organizations that are helping to help our, our well, our earth to be healthy as well. And so I wanted to say thank yes. you for that. <laughs> yes, I um, absolutely. Um, Amy and her fairy friends is a fictional children's book, but I'm sure many will surmise that it's about helping Mother Earth. And I am a dedicated environmentalist. I have been for most of my adulthood. Um, well, I mean, after all, I'm into green living. It's what I'm about. And yes. Um, the Amazon needs help, and I um, and I really want to help as much as I can. So, as, I mean, I have to have some more ebooks. But as I get more sales, I will definitely tie donate a uh, percentage to. I can't remember the name of the organization. <laughs> pardon me for. I mean, I know I'm not like foggy or anything, but I can't remember the name of the organization. But. Um, I'm definitely going to be tithing to them and, and helping them and uh, probably another one as well. But I want to help the planet as much as I can. And that passion is definitely something that shows up in in your, you know, like you said, in your Instagram, your Facebook, your social media. Yes. And it shows yes. up in your, in your books and, and how you present yourself. That. Oh boy, you're cutting! Oh god, oh, my, no. this is really ironic. My cat walks by, and the six and the connection got garbled. I didn't understand what you just said. <laughs> I know you finished us up my Instagram, my Facebook, and I, the rest of it was wah 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 wah. Oh, god, the oh my god, I hate this. Um, ever heard of Mercury retrograde? Are we? Um, I I have no idea if we are or not. I don't pay too much attention. I understand. To it. <laughs> well, actually. It's, it's actually approaching a few days, but I'm not going to go off topic. Oh, okay, now I can understand you much better. My my cat interrupted the field. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to blame him. But he but he walks by and it gets all gobbledygook. Um, but yeah, I'm. It's all over, and I am into green living. And the thing with Amy and her fairy friends, and I don't know if you asked me or not because the connection got weird. But the whole premise of the story. I mean, yes, it is an entertaining, engaging, beautiful story. It's uplifting, it's inspiring, and the most important thing, in fact, if you were to go to my Facebook and my Instagram feed, you would see that I, I have two different images, I have, and my husband helped me with it. I have a cover. Let me know, by by the way, any time that you can't hear me, just let me know, because I'll, I'll do the know. same with you. Yep, Good. Nope, you're fine. So, um, uh, in some areas, I just put the cover, but in other parts, I put a, it's a banner that um, my husband helped me design for social media. It's really cool. And it basically says, join the, um, uh, the mission to help the fairies and help Mother Earth. And there's an image of um, a bunch of children forming a circle around the planet, which is really gorgeous. And the whole idea is that, as I said last time, it's looking through the eyes of a child. And when I was writing this, 
I was crying tears of joy and pain because I'm feeling, unfortunately, it's not easy because I'm also an empath. <laughs> and I'm feeling the pain of Mother Earth. And so I was thinking how I can help the planet. And I thought about the fact that I'm a mother and I have a child. And I imagine what my child would say to me. And when I'm out in nature, I really feel nature deeply. Not just going out there and connecting with the leaves and flowers, but I really have a deep connection with Mother Earth. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure many nature lovers do. Mm-hmm. And I... Uh, and I was feeling her pain and her joy, but I kept hearing my intu- intuition in her voice saying, you need to write this, you need to write this. Children need to share this with their parents and their families and their teachers, and they need to help raise awareness because the adults are paying attention, but they're distracted by everything else, and, and they get caught up in the media, and, and they don't focus. And the children are innocent, and they, they need to spread the word themselves. So that's part of the reason I wrote this is to get the message out there in an innocent way without the jadedness, without the cynicism, without the negative crap and all, you know, the BS. Right. And, you know, just all the stuff adults get caught up in. The child, I'll, I mean, I have friends, and I'll use them as an example. Their children love nature and they love the planet. And instead of doing what their adults are doing, which is watching TV and doing all the stuff, taking care of the kids, the family, the child is reading a playing a game or reading a lovely book that's totally taking them away and, and, and engaging them and making them fall and, and just totally inspiring them. And that was the whole idea because a child isn't going to get distracted and cut up and all that crap because after all, they're not an adult. That's the adult's job to be stressed out and ridiculous. And so <laughs> the child, you know, unfortunately I'm an adult. It sucks. <laughs> that's one of the idea, but I nurture my inner child and I like to forget at times I am an adult and I pretend to be a child and I basically think, what would I have said to my parents way back when to get the message out? And that's what I'm doing now since, unfortunately, and I won't go there because it's too sad because I'll be start grieving again. But um, I couldn't talk to my mother, couldn't talk to my father, but I can talk to my child and I can talk to other families. And children can talk to theirs. And sorry if I'm going off on a tangent, but um, that is the whole idea here is mm-hmm. that Children are the best messengers, and I know that a lot of them care and are hurting to see what's going on with the planet, especially those who are raised by parents who do care and recycle and use natural products and such. And so Amy and her fairy friends can help move that along. And the the illustrations are gorgeous. Now, I can't take credit for them. I borrowed them from from Pixie Bay, you know, it's a free license thing. And the story is just between the relationship between Amy and her mother and her friends and everything about nature and what they're helping people to understand. And and even with hugging a tree, it is just from one thing to the next, it'll captivate you so much that you won't want to pull away from from it. I mean, it is just, you get immersed into nature. You really get immersed into the magic of it and you really feel it. I mean, not just like the leaves and flowers, but you really, really feel it. And you, you can't help but go, wow. I gotta help mother. I gotta. I just gotta do something here. I gotta get the word out, and I gotta share it. You, you just can't help but do it. <laughs> uh, understandable, and you're right. Parents have a lot of well, adults in general, not just parents, have a lot of different stressors that occupy the mind, and we do forget to play, to look at things through. Uh, as you say, the child's eye, and to just kind of look at at the innocence of things. Sorry, okay? I, I walked away, and I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, oh, boy, are you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had to tell my husband something really quick, but um, sorry about that. I know, don't say sorry. So, yeah, you were saying about the book and parents can distract it. Go ahead. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, no, you're fine. You know, the fact that, you know, looking, we forget to look um, at things with the innocence of a child. Mm -hmm. And so where is your book only available on your website or is it available through other sources? Well, Pardon the frustration in my voice, but I'm working on that. I'm striving to do that. At the moment, they're on my blog, on my website, okay. which I'll be happy to share the URL. Um, I self-publish them on there, all of them. 
Um, I, all my books are there, uh, e-books are there, and they're individually, and there's a whole page um, about all of them, and then you can go to each one and read, read about them and order them, but yes, they're all on my website. I would like to put them elsewhere, but I'm having a hard time finding a venue that, well, basically, that I feel comfortable with, and I don't want to talk about what I don't like, because well, I don't want to mention the name negatively, but there's mm -hmm. a popular out, uh, platform out there that I'm just not fond of. I tried it and it didn't work for me. And I know that they are the big guy on the block. Not that I care, but it's just not something I want to do. And, and that's and understandable. Thank There's, you. Uh, yeah, but, no. but I am, but I am, I am looking for another outlet. I'm not looking for another way to get them out there. Okay. I just wanted to. I wanted to know if there was another, you know, another place that I could direct them. Um, but I will definitely have your website listed on, on the show notes page, but if you want, go cool. ahead and, and share that web page right now so that. Okay. <laughs> they sure. I, I, I'd be glad to. <laughs> I just didn't want to be, well, presumptuous. it's one of my saying. I mean, it's, this is about me. I, okay. I'm being silly. Um, <laughs> do I sound neurotic or what? Um, uh, worrying mama. Um, yes, absolutely. And, um, again, I'll, I'll try to, if I am, have difficulties with my mouth, hope you understand me. Yeah. Um, it's, www.wholeearthmama, whole like wholeness, W-H-O-L-E, earth like mother earth, mama, M-A-M-A, -M -A, it's two M's, M-A-M-A dot com, wholeearthmama.com. And what the rear and you need to do is once you go there, it's, it's a twofold thing. Uh, people who, new visitors, when they go there, exploring my blog and such, my blog posts and my books, um, you'll see various, on the very top, there's a, a green, a really pretty green area with a bunch of white headings on it. And you can either start by reading my blog post or you can just zero in right there and you'll see um, each of my ebook is mentioned there. And then I have a heading, I don't know if it's on the top or bottom of the green part. It's all, you know, on top, but it's, I don't know which part of it. It says, uh, by my... Um, I think it says buy my holistic herbal eco ebooks, and that's where all of them are. So then they're individually and all on one page. So I hope that helps. <laughs> it does, and you know, I'm sure that uh, those that visit your website they'll be browsing around anyway because they're going to want to learn more about you. They're going to want to learn more exactly, about exactly uh, the different things that you're offering and and so forth. Yes. So yes. Yeah. I wanted to mention. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go for it, Dana. Um, uh, I, I, I'll try to keep it brief because I don't want to go on off. You know, I, I mean, I, I know I'm telling my story, but you know, feel free to stop me in a moment. But um, <laughs> the sequel to Amy and her fairy friends, as I mentioned last time, I'm writing six of them. This will be the second one, and it's about fairies. It's another part of the world. I'll just say that, and it's about magic, and it's this carrying, continuing the important message of uh, the fairies working with nature and the animals and, and helping the planet. It, it's very similar genre. Okay. And I'm really excited about it. <laughs> oh, I bet. I can imagine, I mean, just from, from our conversations and then, of course, knowing you through uh, um, uh, a group on Facebook that you and I have both been members of for a yes. very long time. Um, yes, yes. You know, yes, I'm I, I'm quite certain you're pretty excited about all of this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Doing I am. all of this writing and, and exploring and, and, and so forth. So one thing that you and I had started to talk about and we had, you know, it's when our phone issues were really, um, well, they were, they were driving us crazy. I'll just word it that way. But one of the things that I, I, one of the things that I wanted to bring up was what, what is one of your missions uh, as a writer? You know, what is your intention to share with people? Well, um, it's kind of twofold. I, I want to inspire the reader to be courageous, be brave. Right, that's 
kind of redundant, <laughs> um, to listen to their intuition and inner voice and to connect with what they're passionate about and follow their heart and their soul. And the most important thing, which is what I did and still do, mm -hmm. is don't listen to other people's opinions. They don't mean, you know what. <laughs> All I do is listen to God and my inner voice. Um, I don't, you know, I think you've heard the expression or a quote. I don't know which. Everybody, other people's opinions is none of your business. <laughs> well, that's yeah. one of my favorite mottos. Because if I had listened to everybody's opinions, I wouldn't be where I am today. <laughs> don't listen to other people. Listen to you. That and, is... Um, I was gonna, oh, I was going to just I say that that is some of the best advice is to to listen to your yes. heart, to listen to your intuition, right. because other people's perception yes. of what is right for us is not necessarily what is right for us. Oops, are you there? Okay. Uh, right. Janice interrupts. Tennis interrupted. <laughs> Usually it's the child that's interrupted, so tech interrupted, but no, the kitties decided they wanted to eat this then, so. And my little, my, the, the boy kitty got his claw stuck, and I'm like, oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's okay. It's just, you know, the life of a, of a mama, you know, wife, uh, mama of a, of a little boy, and a mama of two kitties. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the question again, um, because okay. I don't think you got that far into saying anything so, uh, <laughs> about it. So, uh, Go ahead. Yep. Uh, one thing that I wanted to ask you was, what is like your main mission or that mission or intention that you have as a writer in regards to sharing with your readers? What is it you you want to share okay um well it's partly as a writer but also as a green living person um green living writer i should say um i want to inspire people i want to inspire people to be brave courageous to speak their voice to express their heart and their soul and just stick to the guns and stick to what's important to them and uh, especially for those who care about the environment and care about living well and healthy and all that and being natural um, I mean obviously I, I want to support inspire mainstream writers uh, sorry <laughs> well right. readers and writers as well um, but to really have your voice heard and don't be shy and if you feel the call, answer it. If your heart talks to you, answer it. Um, of course, pray and, 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 and listen to, you know, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And just really do what, uh, um, answer your soul calling. And then really pay attention to the messages that you get from your inner voice. And really honor that. And honor your truths and honor what's important to you and don't go with the, don't go with the herd you go with you and even if you're um, I don't want to use the word rebel but even if you're going against you know you like the black sheep well you know what I'm a black sheep <laughs> so I'd rather be the black sheep and tell the truth than be with the pack and tell lies and just do the wrong thing so just do the right thing and follow your heart and do what feels right to you and honor your truth so one thing I, I want to ask, because I know that you uh, are a, a coach and, mm -hmm. and you're guiding people to connect with their inner dialogue. Is there mm -hmm. something you would like to share with those that are like, well, am I... Am I actually hearing my voice or am I hearing my imagination or am I hearing like my mother's voice or, you know, <laughs> so how do you help people to decipher which voice they're actually listening to? That's a really good question. And I've asked myself that over the years and after some really profound, deep meditations, I could see them. after some deep meditations and prayer and just listening to God, um, 
I got the answer really profoundly. And when I was younger, I'm a very, very intuitive person. I happened since I was 10. I just didn't tell people about it because my family would have thought I was nuts. <laughs> today, I got cars today, I don't really care what they think. But I would hear messages in my mind, in my consciousness, and I didn't really know what I was hearing. And over the years, when I started to learn about my inner voice and my intuition from metaphysical, motivational speakers and such and writers, mm-hmm. um, I understood that when you hear that voice, the first one, that's a loving whisper, not commanding, not angry, not negative, but you hear something, like, for example, okay, and my inner voice guides me all the time, and it keeps me out of trouble. I'm going to give an example from, from myself. When I want to go out somewhere, and it's a possibility that there could be dangers or whatnot, you know, risks, mm-hmm. I hear a voice that says, no, stay home, don't go anywhere, bad idea. Now, the call it the ego, call it whatever you want, but their moms will be like, yeah, right, what's I, I start questioning it. But the thing is, is that if spirit doesn't want me to do something, I won't, spirit will find any way to stop me. <laughs> and one time, my husband and I were going somewhere, or we were supposed to go somewhere, and we lost the keys. <laughs> and we're, oh, no. out. we're like, we're like, oh my God, now what are we going to do? Well, we found our keys about an hour later, and apparently there was a car wreck. So my point is, is that everything happens for a reason. Yes. And when your inner voice tells you something, it's not your ego. It's not the dark forces or Darth <laughs> Vader. For I don't want to use that reference, but it's God talking to you. It's, and I'm not here to preach, okay? But, you know, no. I'm a God-loving person, you know, and I have faith. And I believe in, you know, in, in a higher power and the unseen. And when I hear my inner voice telling me, yes, do this or don't do that, I'm no fool. In my... 50 years, yeah, I just gave away my age. <laughs> in my 51 years of being alive on, on the earth, I know the difference. And when yes. I hear something that says, you know, okay, well, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, and what if, and what if, that's the fear talking. That's yes. the ego going, you know, I'm going to, you know, you need to follow your fear and listen to scarcity bullshit and all that. Yep. I know better, even though I still am guilty of it because I'm human. <laughs> but when <laughs> I hear the voice that says, no, breathe, count to 10, meditate, you can come back later to it and regroup. But don't go anywhere. I know that that's God talking to me, and that's a man of voice. It's a profound difference. Yes. Does that help? Yes. Does that help? <laughs> no, that was perfect. I, I love your answer. That was a great response. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thank and, you. And I like that you mention meditation and, and just kind of sinking into self and, and evaluating is this a loving voice? Is this a, a harsh voice? Is this a voice of, you know, anger or fear? You know, you named a few things. And those those voices, when we hear that, that is not our divine intu- intuition telling us or guiding mm-hmm. us or providing us with any information. That is right. aspects of ourself that wants to be heard needs to be heard because there is value in hearing that but when we use the discernment it's like oh why am i getting that information and why am i hearing that and but when you hear that loving voice that because the divine you know as you said god spirit angels uh right, right, physical right. connections however you know is anybody is comfortable hearing it when it's that I just loving to, voice sorry, oh, go, go ahead. ahead no i go did it again no you could <laughs> i was crossing the street once i just remembered a very profound memory and i was crossing the pedestrian zone one time many 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 years ago i think i was in high school again didn't know what my inner voice was and I also another day had my bicycle with me and I tried to ride my bicycle there and walk. Not only did water splash, but a car went around and almost and missed me by foot. And my inner voice said, hey, and at first it was loving. Then it was commanding and said, hey, girl, woman, what the heck is wrong with you? Why aren't you listening to me? You want to get yourself killed? So listen to me or else. <laughs> back off, yes. back up and do as I tell you. And I got to tell you, it was like that, you know, it's like, you know, at least lightning didn't hit me in the head. But, I mean, it's like, I don't need a house to fall on me, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean. And they do, are though, you know, that guardian voice does have a tendency to, 
speak loudly when it needs yep. to, when we're not right. paying attention. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I am so grateful. We have had so far only one disconnection in our conversation. <laughs> so is Me there, too. Me too. <laughs> is there, Thank God. <laughs> right? Um, is there a uh, message that you would like to share to uh, as we wrap up the end of this podcast episode? Hmm. Hold on one sec. Oh, I thought I had to. I thought I was talking to me. Um, hmm, well, um, okay, uh, it's actually relevant to my course I'm going to be launching soon, okay. but there's one thing I want to impart, and I don't want it to turn into another, like, lesson, for lack of better words, but there are people who realize that being green is easy, and it's not complicated. There are many who believe it's complicated. Right. Well, I am living proof in my well, I don't want to say 50 years because I, I have, I've, I've been this way 30 years. In my 30 years of life, I have learned that there's the, and this is what I write about, and I'm trying to keep it as simple and succinct as I possibly can without going off on another tirade tangent. But um, this is what I teach about in my books and pretty soon in my course. And the thing is, is that the beauty of my writing is that living green is a lot easier than you think. It's only complicated when you complicate it and you listen to the wrong influences. It's only complicated when you make it more than it has to be, okay? Mm -hmm. If you want to live a healthy green life, just do it. I don't mean to, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to, to uh, uh, quote <laughs> mottos, but I'm serious, okay? I mean, when I did it, it's basically pain versus pleasure. I got sick and tired of feeling like crap and I got sick and tired of contributing to the problem because I care. You know, when I worked, when I was in environmentalist chemistry for Greenpeace, I found out the truth. And, you know, you either want to listen or you don't. Now, if you don't want to listen, fine. But if you do, all you got to do is use some common sense, okay? It's not that hard to do. Right. And you don't have to turn your life upside down. Being green is one of the easiest things I ever did. And the most important thing is that, you know, I mean, I like being healthy. I like being aware. And I like keeping it simple. You know, I... I'm not going to talk about the things that I'm anti because it'll take me too long, but I'm an herbalist for a reason. Plant medicine has saved my life. And while I don't want to preach about that right now, um, it is really, it's a lot easier to do than people think. And I got to tell you, it's also money saving because you can throw your money down the toilet and basically do the wrong things and pollute yourself on the planet and you'll get nowhere. Right. But it's so easy to do, and I will be sharing more about that in, in, my, um, in my, my writing and, and my courses coming up. It is so easy. You wouldn't even, it, it's like, it will blow your mind. It's Occam's razor. It's like, it's, it's right in front of you that, that it's so simple to do. All you've got to do is make some little changes in your life, and it'll blow your mind. And you'll go, wow, why didn't I listen to this before? It is so easy to do. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm just really passionate about it. I mean, I treat my body like a temple. I care about what I eat and everything else and what I put on my body. And, I mean, I just, I like to feel good and I like to feel well. And, and I, you know, okay, well, I think you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're making sure that, you know, what is, what you're putting on, as you said, on your body you know, your family, how it's, mm -hmm. it's self-care, it's family care. Um, yep. There is something to be said about, um, you know, looking at what, and, and making that conscious decision, what is mm -hmm. healthy for me? What are the mm -hmm. options that I have? And, and in looking at it with a, another set of eyes, as far mm -hmm. as coming out of the the routine of well this is how I grew up this is what I just do or mm -hmm. um, exactly in looking you at, don't have to keep doing it you don't have to keep doing it right. <laughs> yeah and taking that approach I mean, of I want to feel better exactly I mean you know I when I was younger in well I shouldn't say younger when I was a young adult in my 20s and I was starting I was starting to see myself and being being called by people in my family as a black sheep 
I cared at first because I didn't like it, but then I realized, you know what, that's just, that's the life of a warrior. That's the life of someone who's truth there and, and basically does God's work. I mean, if, if people don't like you, well, they're not part of your tribe. They're not your friends. They're not your people. They're not your family. Right. You know, I, I cared for a long time, but now I don't. You know, the people who really care about the same things, those are the people I connect with. If you don't want to hear my truth, well, then you're not my people. Well, you just... You don't, you're not ready or you're just not going to be. And you'd rather listen to the manipulated mainstream media. <laughs> so, but that's not me, you know. Yeah. All righty. Well, Dana, I am so grateful that, again, we <laughs> had this opportunity to actually record a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Thank you. You are it was so great. It was wonderful. I'm, I'm so grateful. I prayed, by the way. I prayed really big time, so... Thank God. Thank you, God. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I visualize and I affirm. So, you know, I'm really grateful. Really am. I am too. I don't want to interrupt you, but I nope. had one thought that I forgot to mention before, and then you can go back to yours. I also um, have, I publish a newsletter uh, with tips and things for Green Living and Recipes that, um, for any, um, readers can subscribe and, and learn about my writing and, and, and join the tribe and, and be part of it. And, um, you can, you can find out about it on my blog. And, um, well, there's another URL I put out as well. But um, they, if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll love what I have to share. Now, go ahead what you, you were saying. <laughs> no, no. I was just, I was just wrapping up our, our time together. And, I again, thank you. Thank you so much. And you're welcome, too. And it was, it was, it was a pleasure. I, I, I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. All right, Dana, you take care of yourself. Pet the kitty kitties for me. And <laughs> I tell I your husband thanks for, you know, getting you set up with the phone and, and everything. So have a great evening and a great week. You too. Take care of yourself, Dana. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Before we end our time together, we'd like to say thank you for listening to my conversation with Dana Colvin. To access her website and purchase the books she has written, visit pentopaperpress.com backslash podcast and select the show notes page for this episode. To receive future episodes in your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter and subscribe on your favorite podcast application. You are invited to share your favorite episodes on social media and with individuals who will resonate with this content. The intention of Pen to Paper Press podcast is to reinforce that our words have power and our stories matter. To share this important message, I created several mug designs for you to choose from with my artwork. These are perfect for enjoying your favorite beverage when listening to this podcast series. You can find an array of products available for purchase at pen to paperpress.com backslash store. Take care and until next time, keep your pen to paper and write. Your words have power. Your story matters. Bye for now.